Here at Westminster Seminary in California, we think that covenantal works is vitally important to our overall understanding of the system of doctrine taught in the scriptures. It's in our confessions, and we as a faculty subscribe uh, to uh, confessions, especially the Westminster Confession of Faith, which is crystal clear on the covenant of works. It's especially important in this day and age because it has been so much diminished in people's teaching and preaching. And I, I would go so far as to even say that the present faculty here believes it's important and systemic to our entire understanding of the gospel. It's not a doctrine that we concede or agree is there in the scriptures and then suddenly move on from Genesis 1, 2, and 3 and leave behind. It permeates our understanding of, of Christ's work. For me, it makes the gospel come alive. J.G. Machen is one of my heroes, has been since I was a young man and discovered his life and writings. And as you may be aware, J.G. Machen founded Westminster Seminary. And his last words on his deathbed to John Murray were, thank God for the act of obedience of Christ. And for me, the covenant of works makes that come alive because it's not just a matter of Adam failing to do what God had given him to do with respect to a duty to discharge, namely not to eat of this one tree. From all the other trees in the garden you may eat, but not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But in obeying God, he actually had to offer up a positive righteousness, which would then, that righteousness would be considered uh, by God as uh, satisfying the command that he had given. So it was both the negative side of the, of the equation, not disobeying God's law, God's word, but then also offering up an obedience, a willing uh, obedience on the part of a son who is in relationship with the father. So, you know, this whole false dichotomy between relational theology and legal or forensic theology, I, I think, is a, is a false dichotomy. Had Adam fulfilled all righteousness by doing what he was required to do, then he would have indeed uh, won the Father's approbation because the Father set the covenant terms just like that. Namely, Adam do this and uh, indeed implied you will live. And he failed in that, sadly enough, and as uh, the Westminster Shorter Catechism says, uh, cast all of the human race into abject sin and misery. Because he was our federal representative head. Uh, but of course, that's the bad news. The good news is that God had another plan and sent his son, uh, Jesus Christ, in order to fulfill all righteousness. And we know that Christ, at each turn, did not sin. He was without sin, the writer to Hebrews says, but moreover, he offered that positive righteousness. And so our sin is, is put on or cast upon, imputed technically uh, to Christ, and, uh, but Christ's righteousness is imputed to us, given to us if we uh, trust him uh, by grace through faith. And that's good news.